Good morning and welcome to our Friday live Bible study. My name is Claire and I'm on staff here at Caris. I take care of the bookstore and the student events and I absolutely love it. And uh, welcome to today's program. If you're not familiar with how our live Bible study works, I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to tell you about it. So you're going to hear from our amazing Barry Bennett today. And um, the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program, we're going to take as many questions as we can from you. So if you have a question while he's teaching, um, you can submit that to us. And let me tell you how to do that. You can email us at uh, que uh, livequestions at awmi.net. You can text us at 719-2122-555. Or if you're watching online, there's going to be a chat section next to the video or just below it. Um, you can submit your questions there as well. And then uh, we'll collect them and we'll get to as many as we can uh, towards the end of the show. So uh, like I said, we're live. We're live five days a week. So on Mondays and Fridays, it's 10 a.m. in the morning. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's 6 p.m. in the evening. And then on Wednesday, bright and early at 7 a.m. in the morning. And that's all mountain time. So hopefully you can catch us throughout the week multiple times. That would be great. And um, if you need prayer for anything, we have a prayer ministry team on standby waiting to take your call. Um, we're open 24-7, so 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can reach us. And uh, let me give you the number. It's 719-635-1111. And uh, just reach out to them. Don't be alone. If you need prayer, please call us. And uh, the team is, they're wonderful. They love to pray for people. So just let them know what you're going through. And I know they'll be able to bless you. And also we have like 200,000 hours of resources available um, for all different categories and scenarios and issues of life. So uh, if you need a resource on something, just let them know while you're on the phone with them and they'd be happy to send you something and hopefully that would really bless you. Um, but today I'm with my favorite teacher in the universe, Barry Bennett. He's our senior instructor. And um, I know you guys are gonna be blessed today. So uh, Barry, welcome. Thank you, Claire. Good to be here again. <laughs> yes. Looking forward to, to sharing the word with you all and uh, hope everyone is having a blessed day. Amen. I want to talk to you today about living by the Spirit of God. And I want to use as my kickoff verse Galatians 5.25. Galatians 5.25 says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So what this is saying is if we're born again, if we're recreated a new creation, one spirit with him, then let's live like it is basically right. what it's saying. Yep. And so we need to learn to not only rest in our uh, born again state, but we need to learn to live by the spirit. And I know I have a lot of people that write me questions or uh, communicate with me in school or what have you. And I bring these things up and they uh, seem perplexed and how I don't know how to live in the spirit. I don't know how to choose the spirit because I will use the word choose quite a bit. I say, you need to choose the joy of the Lord or you need to choose peace. And they say, I don't know how to do that. And what has happened is that we have become so accustomed to living by our emotions, by our flesh, mm -hmm. by our senses, by what we see, what we hear. We live on that level and we live that way for our entire lives until we were born again. And then we continue to live that way after we're born again. And I'll come along and say, you need to choose peace or choose joy. And so many people say, I don't know how to do that. What are you even talking about? Mm. And so that's what I want to talk about today is uh, to learn how to live by the spirit of God or in the spirit of God. So what does it mean to walk in the spirit? We're exhorted to walk in the spirit many times. Romans 8, 5 gives us a good, good place to, to go to. Romans 8, 5 says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. So there's a, a real demarcation there is that you can, even as a believer, still live by the flesh or you can live by the spirit. And it says those who live according to the flesh set their minds. And so now we have a new element added into this. They set their minds on the things of the flesh. Or in other words, those that are living according to the flesh are letting their minds control 
how they respond to the issues of life, whether it be the news or whether it be a physical issue or an economic issue or a family issue or whatever the case may be, they are limiting themselves to the option of where their mind is at. Mm. Whereas those who live by the spirit have their minds renewed to the word of God, to the good, acceptable and perfect will of God, Romans 12, 2. And so their mind is in a different place. But really, when we begin to study the mind, we've got to go back to the, to the foundation of that, which is the heart. And so it says in Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he, or as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So the thinking that comes forth from the mind is, has a source, and the source is the heart. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of digging a, a foundation here before we start to build on it. But let's, let's talk about the heart for a moment. In Matthew 15, 19, Matthew 15, 19 says, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. Mm. Well, there, there we go. If we're walking according to the flesh, it's really saying that you're walking according to a heart that is not fully renewed to the things of God. Or in other words, evil thoughts aren't going to reside in a heart that's fully uh, transformed by the, by the grace of God. And so it's a heart issue. As you think in your heart, as you think in your heart, out of the heart come evil thoughts. Mm. And so evil we could replace with fearful thoughts, anxious thoughts, thoughts of depression, uh, we could go down the gamut, run the list of all of the different kinds of thoughts that people have. When we're living <laughs> according to the flesh, we're thinking according to our five senses, mm. our emotions, uh, the stimuli of the world, the, the negativity of the news, all of those kinds of things are creating anxiety. They're creating fear, uh, anger, strife, bitterness, unforgiveness. All of those things really have their source in the heart. But when you live by the Spirit, your heart has been renewed to the things of the Spirit of God, and now you have a choice. And that's, I want to I emphasize that for a moment. Many people and many Christians don't know that they have a choice, that they don't, you don't have to respond as you always have responded to a negative circumstance. Mm. You don't have to get angry. You don't have to get bitter. You don't have to be uh, fearful you have a choice. Now, before you were born again, you didn't have a choice. We were all limited to our five senses and to our emotions and to the way we were raised. And that was how we responded to anything. But you're born again now. You're a new creation. And we need to learn to put on the new man, or in other words, adapt ourselves to the new reality that's mm. within our spirit man and not just walk according to the way the flesh always, we've always done it this way, as people say. Right. <laughs> well, your flesh has always done it that way. Uh, and you don't have to always do it that way now. So you can choose the new spiritual life that's within you. And we're going to delineate that here in just a minute. Okay, so let me just look at my notes a little bit. We choose to live after the flesh. We don't know that we now have options. We choose to allow our hearts to get contaminated. Uh, when people, someone said something ugly to me this morning on Facebook, uh, just before I came here. And uh, they didn't like some a post I wrote, and so they wrote mm. an ugly response. I can choose to get in the flesh and respond. Right. I'm good at it. I used to be good at it. <laughs> I can slice and dice with the best of them. I can get into a debate mode. I can get agitated. I can get into strife. And I'm not going to do that anymore. I, mm. I just refuse to do it. I am choosing to ignore it. I chose to delete it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the best way to ignore it. <laughs> and so I'm not, I, I'm not going to get into strife, but that is a choice that over time I have learned to make. It didn't come automatically because my flesh wants to defend myself. Right. right? And I had things I could say, but I thought that, that puts me back in the flesh. That puts me back on right. that level. And I don't want to be on that level. I want to live in the spirit. So did, did you, um, you could have retaliated. <clears throat> so what's going on the inside was probably, oh, bless his socks, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but so is being in the spirit, choosing not to act out. So yes. you, may, you may still have that anger on the inside. No, or not well, anger, but annoyance anger. Just, or whatever, just, or. Well, you know, a little agitated that someone, they, and they went on to say, I didn't even read the whole post because I didn't agree with the first two sentences or something like that. I'm thinking, and so you're going to judge me and you didn't even read the whole, the whole article. It was mm -hmm. chock full of scriptures. 
Uh, and so it was one of those things where I thought, I, I'm not going to go there. I don't need to go there. If someone that doesn't even have the courtesy to read the whole article, then why should I get into a conversation? But see, those are choices mm. that we make uh, that I have learned over years to choose the spiritual response and not the the, the default right. <laughs> flesh yes. response that we're all used yeah. to. One good way, and I like to bring this up because everybody kind of, it, uh, if it doesn't prick you, then I, I'm surprised. But one good way to know if you're in the spirit or in the flesh is by how you drive. <laughs> See, you. Okay. So when you get in your car, you're sort of autonomous. You're your own thing. You make your own decisions. You can drive the way you want to drive and you can get angry at people and you can, people cut you off or you cut somebody off and you can shake your fist and all of these kinds of things are possible when you drive. A good way to know if you're in the spirit is if you can be gracious when you drive. Uh, if you get angry, if you honk and, and get bitter, and if you wish you had a James Bond machine gun in the front of your car, uh, those are th those are flesh reactions, and I've had those reactions. I, you know, we've all been in driving situations where we get angry at someone. But if you can choose, and mm -hmm. this is a good way to learn to choose the spirit, choose to drive in the spirit, choose to be friendly, choose to be courteous, and choose to pray for those that spitefully drive around you. <laughs> right. Uh, people that cut you off, people that are angry, people that tailgate. And I had one of those last night. Uh, I have nowhere to go and why you're in my back seat, I don't know. Yeah. But you know what? I choose to pray for those people. Mm -hmm. They're dealing with something or maybe it's just their ego. I don't know. But something has made them shape them to be yeah. uh, in that position at that time. And so, I, I'm, I, you know what? I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to be, I'm going to get out of their way as soon as I can. I'm going to be courteous. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to choose those reactions. And the more I've done this over the years, the easier it is. It has become my new default, mm. my new basic response to the stimuli that, that in the past would have agitated me and gotten me angry. I'm not going to do that anymore. And those are choices that I've made. So I want to I go over three areas of how to know if you're living from the soul. And then we'll do three areas of how to know if you're living from the spirit of God. So hopefully uh, this will... Well, the first three may not bless you, but <laughs> we're learning. We're going we're gonna to grow. Amen? Amen. Okay. So how do you know if you're living from your soul? First one, you are motivated by feelings, feelings of sadness, anger, bitterness, fear, depression, grief are all normal and expected. You expect to be angry. You expect to be fearful. You expect to be bitter. These are, those are just how you live. And so you're living from your soul when those are your expectations that if someone says something, I've got an answer for them. If mm. something happens, I'm going to be angry. If something else happens, I'm going to be fearful. And so you have become so accustomed to that that you don't even realize you're not living from the spirit of God. You're living from your soul. And there's no abundant life promised for your soul in that, in that yeah. sense, in yeah. that context. All right. Uh, you evaluate your day based on feelings. I'm still in number one. So you evaluate your day based on how you feel. What, how things made you feel and you go to bed angry or you go to bed not angry based upon how everything went and if everybody did exactly what you wanted them to do. You pray, still in number one, you pray or read the word only if you feel like it. So then your, your relationship with God is, is relegated to feelings as well. Right. I don't feel like reading my Bible today. Well, that's a choice. You're, yeah. you're making a choice yeah. and it's a choice that is not blessing you. Amen. You grow weary easily. When you live on the soul level or the flesh level, you wear out quickly. Yeah. You're not, uh, I was just talking to the students in chapel this morning and talking about those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Waiting upon the Lord means being in, a, in an intimate fellowship with him. And so if you're running out of strength, all that means is you're not waiting on the Lord. You're right. not getting renewed in that fellowship with the father. And so Feelings control you when you're living from the soul or from mm, the flesh. That's good. Number two, second one, your prayer life, if you pray, is motivated by emotions, not by the promises of God, but by the, the negative things that are taking place around you. In other words, prayer becomes more of a 911 than it is a fellowship, faith-based, visionary mm. uh, activity. And so what I have here, you only pray out of fear or grief or sympathy or sorrow. 
And it's not that those things aren't genuine and we can't pray for them, but if that's the only motivation that will get you to pray is fear or grief or sorrow, then you're not praying from the spirit of God. You're praying from your own flesh and your own soul. Your prayer is based on emotional reaction rather than spiritual vision. This is so key because so many Christians aren't praying from a vision that God has given them. They're not enforcing the will of God. They're not praying from a motivation of faith and believing they receive. They're praying from fear. Oh, God, please don't let this happen. Or, oh, God, please don't let so-and-so die. Or, oh, God, please. And it's a begging kind mm -hmm. of emotional thing, but right. it's not a spiritual right. dynamic. It's not a spiritual power that we have available to us. And so those, that's a good sign that you're not living from the spirit. You're living from the soul. Okay, third one it says you allow your senses to evaluate your spiritual growth and the blessings of God. You only believe you're blessed, or in other words, you walk by sight right. and not by faith. Right. You walk by, well, I don't think I'm blessed because I don't see any blessings. I don't think I can do this because I don't feel it. I don't feel strong enough, or I don't feel like I have enough money, or I don't have this, or everything's not lining up. And so you're evaluating everything by your senses. Again, and this is similar to number one, but you're not evaluating anything by the promises of God. In other words, you're walking by sight. I'll believe it when I see it. You're not walking by faith. I believe it because he says it. His word says it. Therefore, it's a promise of God. I'm going to stand on that promise. And I know in the spirit world, this thing is taking shape. It's coming to pass. In due season, I will reap if I don't grow weary. Mm. But many people don't. They don't walk that way. They walk according to only if they see it, only if they feel it, only if they sense it uh, tangibly will they believe that it's actually happening, that God is actually blessing them. You allow your body to tell you if you're healed or not. Well, I've been there, done that mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> recently. Okay. okay, but I had a word from God that I was coming through what I went through. Uh, for those that don't know, I went through a year of a battle with cancer. But I had a, a word from God that I would not die from that and that I would come through it. And so I kept my vision on that. My body tried to make it difficult on me. Yeah. I went through some stuff. Yeah. You know, I got discouraged at times, but that, that was on a different level than my faith. My faith was at a deeper level that I knew, even though I might be discouraged for an hour or two right now, I'm going to make it. I had a vision of doing this, of being yeah. back full time yeah. in teaching. And so I, I chose the spirit. It was, it was a tough choice at times, but you can choose to, to walk by the spirit, to believe, to see the future, to, to choose joy over, over fear and anger. You can choose peace. Mm. You can choose to That's be at true. peace. Yeah. And some people say, you don't, Barry, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what I'm going through. Peace isn't based on your circumstances. Peace is based on your relationship with God. Yeah. And you can be at peace there. And once you get peace, uh, released, if you will, in your spirit, man, in your heart, then circumstances will begin to line up. Yeah, it's uh, true. And, yeah. and whether they yeah. do or don't, you will be Stop in a place focusing of victory. On them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Amen. All right. So those are just some ideas about what it looks like living from the soul. So let me go on now to what it looks like when you live from your spirit which is a whole better way of living. Amen. Okay, so number one, you are motivated by the word. Back in the, the soul uh, characteristics, you're motivated by your feelings, by what you see, by the, the things that are going on around you. That's, that's what motivates you to fear or to prayer or to whatever. You're, you're a feeling-oriented person, but in the spirit, you're motivated by the word of God. I go through the word and I look for the promises. I look for the, the nature of God, the goodness of God, the love of God, the, the grace of God, the blessings of God. And I have these things highlighted in my iPad and my Bible. And I go through and I'll just read those just to build myself up and make sure I have God's vision for my life. God wants to bless me. Mm. He wants to bless you. And so I keep that in front of me. I'm motivated by the word, regardless of what my circumstances may look like at right. the moment. That is not, you know, circumstances are temporal, but the word of God is eternal. Yeah. Circumstances come and go. Yep. People come and go. Money comes and goes. Health comes and goes. All of these things. But the word stays yes. the same. Amen. The promises Amen. of God. Yes. So when you're living by the spirit, your heart isn't filled with evil thoughts of negativity, but with the positive thoughts, mm. God's blessings. Amen. Yes. You believe what is written over what you feel. You choose to be thankful. In one place, Paul talks about a sacrifice of praise. A sacrifice is something you don't necessarily feel like giving. 
But you can be thankful even when you don't think you have anything to be thankful for. Mm -hmm. And in fact, becoming thankful uh, before you see tangibly the, the answers, being thankful uh, is the answer to seeing the answers. Right, in, yes. In other words, as we get our hearts filled with thanksgiving and we rejoice and thank you, Father, though I don't see my body being healed right now, mm -hmm. I do see it in the spirit. I see myself prospering. I see myself teaching. I see this, I see that, and I give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. Mm. So you're being motivated by the word of God and not by your five senses, not Can by I your feelings. Give you a little story. Yeah, please. Okay, so we were, we didn't even realize we were doing this. Years ago, Mark got a 50 cents increase in his paycheck. And at first we didn't realize it. And then he looked at his paycheck and he's like, oh, 50 cents, wow. And not long after that, we learned about cursing your blessings by saying, oh, wow, 50 cents, what am I gonna do with that? We were cursing that extra increase without even realizing it, because mm -hmm. what, what a difference is that gonna make? It's not, that's not the point. The point is we weren't even thankful for what we had in the first place. Yeah. That was such, when we learned that, that was such a huge, that shifted our entire position of being thankful for everything that God has given us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's good. That's, that's <clears throat> so good. And that's, that's a choice. Yes. That rather than saying this is nothing, you say, thank you, God, for yes. every increase, because that's going to open the door to future that's increase. Exactly what happened. Yes. Amen. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's so good. Thank you. Uh, second point. So we're talking about living from the spirit, a different dimension of, of living from the spirit. So the first one is you're motivated by the word. The second one is your prayer, your prayer life is motivated by visions of victory, visions of blessing, visions of the promises of God, not by grief and fear, but by a vision of the good things God wants to do for you. And that's the way to pray. I, I, you know, it's not that you can't pray when someone needs you to pray for them, but it's that what is your vision for them? Mm. I sure hope this works and maybe you'll get better. Maybe you won't. Or you have a vision of their healing, their health, their victory. Or if, if you're talking about your own family life or your monetary circumstances or what have you, are you praying with a vision of the prosperity of God, the blessing of God? Or are you praying, I sure hope this works. Mm. See, if you're in the, I hope this right. works kind of attitude, you're still in your soul. You're not in the spirit. We need to pray with a vision, a spiritual vision of victory based upon the promises of God. We don't beg God. We, we thank God. Mm -hmm. uh, go from begging to thanking. That's a choice. All of these things are choices that we can make that will keep us in the spirit of, yes. of God. And you learn it, it will take time. Some of this will be hard for some folks because we've become so accustomed to reacting in the flesh to everything. And so you're, you're teaching yourself a new paradigm from which to live. And it's, it may take some time. There's a learning curve. But the more you do it, the easier it becomes. And when someone now says something ugly or does something ugly to you, I, I just, I refuse yeah. to go there. I'm yeah. not going there. Now in the past, I would have, but now I don't. And it's, boy, it's so much more peaceful that way. I, just, <laughs> I don't is, have to get, get a into that. a good night's sleep and Amen. you forget about it in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, third one, you expect God's word to set the course for your life. Rather than letting circumstances set the course for your life or your five senses or your emotions or the way you were raised or what people have told you you can and can't do, don't let those things set the course for your life. Mm. Let the word of God and the promises of God determine your future, your destiny and what's possible. Uh, there are so many men and women of God that had very negative upbringings, very uh, critical, judgmental, self-condemnation, guilt, trips and the whole thing. And yet they broke through to realize that what God had for them was real mm. and could be attained. And they, they broke through the, all of the negativity of their lives and chose the spirit of God and chose the word of God. And now they're, they're great men and women of God with great testimonies and great books. And they've changed nations because they refused to be bound by their five senses, by their emotions, by the flesh uh, of the way they used to live. Yeah. And they've yeah. chosen to break out of that. And you can do that too. Yeah. All of us can choose the things of the spirit. All of us can choose. Uh, and I'm going to go through a list here in just a second, but we, we all have the capacity to make new choices. Don't sit there and look mm. at me right now and tell me mm -hmm. you can't. You can. If yes. you're born again, you can. And you should, because that's where the abundant life is. 
If you're not walking in the peace that passes understanding, if you don't have faith and vision for the future, if you don't have the joy of the Lord, then the way you're doing it is wrong. Mm, <laughs> Admit it. Yeah, yeah. First step toward victory is admitting you've been making some mistakes and start to choose and say, Father, I, I'm going to choose to be joyful today, no matter what. Yep. It may be a trial for you. It may be, may be hard. It may stretch you, but you've, you can do it. I'm going to choose to stay in peace today. So let's, let's look at that. Let's, mm. What does it mean to live by the Spirit? Let's go to Galatians 5, 22 through 25. Galatians 5, 22 through 25. And, and Paul is giving us the fruit of the Spirit. Now, when you got born again, you didn't get one of these or two of these. You got all of them. They're all there. When you got the Spirit, you got everything the Spirit is. Yes. And so it's not that, well, what did you get? Well, I got love. What did you get? Well, I got long suffering. <laughs> no, you, you, you get it all. So when we, when we get the Spirit of God, we get everything God is. <laughs> Praise God. So let's look at this. The fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22. The fruit of the Spirit is love. You have the love of God. Mm. Shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Write down Romans 5.5. 5. We won't look it up. But Romans 5.5, 5, we all have the love of God by the Holy Spirit in us. You can love people as God loves you. It's a possibility, mm. but it's going to have to be a choice. You have joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I'm reading back again from the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22. We have the love of God. We have the joy of the Lord. You can be joyful right now. You can choose to be joyful. Yeah. And, and everything may be collapsing around you, but the joy is something on the inside that will give you strength to get through whatever it is that's going on around you. I don't know how else to live. I mean, I, you've got to make these mm. choices or you're going to be a victim. Okay. We have peace. He will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Isaiah 26, 3, I believe. Uh, you can walk in peace. Now that may be catastrophe around you, but you don't have to, you don't have to participate. Right. You yeah. can be in peace. You can be in joy and you can keep loving. Long suffering uh, is putting up with stuff <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> well, people. It's, it's due, due season. It's, it's, it's waiting for the, the, you know, the timing of God sometimes. It's just hanging in there, being perseverant, being patient by faith and patience. We inherit the promises. Kindness. Kindness is the first thing I look for in any, any spiritual leader, especially. Uh, if, I find, if I see ego and, and a crazy attitude, then I'm not interested. But when I see mm. kindness in a leader, then I know they're genuine because you, you can be kind. And, and some people say, that, well, I have a prophetic gift and so I'm abrasive. No, eh, abrasiveness is not a fruit of the spirit. Uh, kindness is. I don't care what your gift is. You can still be kind. Yes. And it's and say important. Say things in love. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So we can choose kindness. You can choose goodness. You can choose faithfulness. All of these things are choices that we can make. Uh, you can choose gentleness. You can choose self-control. All of us have self-control. Yes. When you or drive, you have self-control. Right. Well, no, you do have it. When you drive, you can choose self-control yeah. and kindness. When you are someone yells at you, you can choose self-control and kindness. You can choose love. You can choose to forgive. All of these things came packaged, if you will, when we got born again. When the Spirit of God came to live in you, the nature of God came to live in mm. you. And all of those things are possibilities for us to choose, but we have got to relearn how to live. And instead of just going to the default of living by the flesh and living by the senses and the emotions and getting angry and crying and getting fearful and flipping out, you don't have to go there. You can choose. No, count, you know, we have the whole thing, old thing, count to 10. Count to 10, count to 20, count to 100, count to whatever you need to count to before you respond. Yeah. Until you say, okay, this is a very complicated situation, but I know I have the Spirit of God within me. Okay, I'm just going to, before I say anything, I'm going to draw on the Spirit of God. Father, help me right now to draw on your Spirit and to be at peace or to be joyful or to forgive or to love or to give. I believe that's in me and I'm going to draw on that right now. And the, see, I, ha, I made a choice to pray mm. from a vision of the promises of God rather than 
well, I'll just tell you what I think and, and go that direction. That's easy. Anyone can do that. But you're an ambassador of Jesus Christ. I'm an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Yeah, and good. we have been commissioned to <laughs> reveal his goodness and his love to the world. And you can't do it if you're uh, making hand signals in your car to people <laughs> or, or whatever. You know, you can't. That's not the love of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you can choose to love or you can choose to withhold love. You can choose to forgive or you can choose to withhold forgiveness. Mm. You can choose to be joyful or you can choose to be angry. You can choose to be patient or you can choose to be, uh, I don't know what the opposite of that is, <laughs> impatient. <Yeah. laughs> but all of these things are things we can learn to do. And I just really want to encourage those that are watching uh, to, to, to start making new choices and to realize you're equipped with the Spirit of God. You can make these choices. You can walk in the spirit. And in the spirit is where the abundant life of God is. It's not yeah. in your flesh. Yeah. It's in your spirit. So start making new choices. That was awesome. Yes. I am a way better, more patient, more loving and kind driver than I used to be for sure. Good. Once in a while. Yeah, because you lived I in forget. Florida and Florida's <laughs> kind of crazy down there. Well, uh, yeah. I, Everywhere, <laughs> the crazy drivers everywhere. All right, we've had some good questions that have come in. So um, I will start with Michelle on Facebook. She's asking, what is the difference between heart and soul? What is the difference between heart and soul? The way Andrew teaches this, and I like it, and it's helped me, is that your heart is the union of your soul and your spirit. In other words, you're going to make a choice whether to live from the soul slash flesh or live from the spirit. And where you make that choice is your heart. Mm. It's, it's the deciding factor. And Jesus said, out of, a, out of an evil treasure of the heart, men bring forth evil things, or out of a good treasure of the heart, they bring forth. Well, the, the treasure is going to come either from your flesh, the lust of your flesh, or it's mm -hmm. going to come from the spirit of God. That's your heart, and that's where those choices are made. That's awesome. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, Alfredo on YouTube is asking, God said that he will write his laws in our hearts. How does the spirit cause us to follow them? Well, the, the law of God is not talking about the law of Moses, but it's talking about the laws of right and wrong, of knowing right from wrong. Everyone has that innately in them. That is, that is within all of us. And so the spirit is going to obviously quicken that which bears witness to the spirit, which is going to be uh, truth, goodness, all of, all of those kinds of things. And so if you're walking in the spirit, it's going to be a natural outflow of, of walking in the nature of God, which mm. is the fruit of the spirit. We just read love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, long suffering, self-control. Those will just become your new normal. Uh, as you walk in the spirit and, and you will begin to, and you know, Paul says, put on the new man, put off the old man. So there is a, um, an activity or a decision making on our part. Right. I am going to choose the new man. I'm going to choose my new identity in Christ. I'm not going to go back and live for my flesh. Mm, Cause sometimes it's easier to walk in certain fruits of the spirit than others. Yeah, and some take a little bit more yes. according to how you were as an old man, uh, yeah. the old man, you know, yeah. um, some of them take I thought you were practice. calling me an old man anyway. <laughs> the old man. No, not <laughs> okay. you. All right. Careful. <laughs> All right. Um, Sarah on YouTube asks, um, can you advise with examples on how to wait upon the Lord to renew my strength? Okay. I just taught this this morning in chapel, uh, waiting on the Lord, the, the actual word wait in Isaiah, where is it? Uh, 40 or 41, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. To wait means to bind together. Mm. That's the, the technical definition, to bind together. And so when we are bound together, it's talking about intimate, ongoing fellowship with the Lord, those that wait upon the Lord. And I liken it to a, a dog when you're, a dog can be sound asleep somewhere in the house. And the minute you go to get the dog's food, one ear goes up. Uh, if you've had a dog and they start listening intently to the next sound you make. And if they are convinced that it's food time, they will come galloping into the kitchen and sliding across the floor, bump into you. And immediately their eyes get laser focused on everything you're doing. Mm -hmm. As you prepare to get the bowl and do this, their eyes, they are just looking at everything you're doing. That's being, that's waiting on the Lord. In other words, they're, they're totally bound together with what you're doing. And so when we, when our fellowship with God becomes so 
um, such a blessing that we just can't wait to be in the Word. I can't wait to highlight new things that I find out about God. I can't wait to think about His promises. I like to write, so I'll write things down. I'm in that system of waiting on God. And then things get quickened to me and my strength gets renewed. Mm. But when I, if I leave that aside and go do my own thing, uh, I begin to get we weary. I run out of gas. I, I can't do it in my own strength. But if I keep in that position of fellowship with God, then my strength is renewed. That's awesome. I, it's been quite a while since I went through school, but like even you just saying that you spoke to the first year students about this this morning, I'm like, man, I just want to go back to and do it all over again and just <laughs> soak it all up again because it's so good. Amen. Amen. Um, okay. Um, Tabitha on YouTube asks, Psalm 103 starts with, bless the Lord, O my soul. How does it apply to those who live by the Spirit of God? Well, we want to bring our soul into, into communion with what the Spirit is doing. In other words, you don't want to have a soul that wants one thing and a spirit that wants another. You want to be uh, completely one, we'll say, your spirit and your soul in agreement. And so you can, you can bring your soul into the agreement or into submission to the Spirit of God. It's been on its own for so long uh, that it does its own thing. Uh, until you got born again, and now there is an option. You can live by the Spirit. And by living by the Spirit, you can tell your emotions to calm down. You can tell your soul to give thanks to the Lord. And it, you're doing it in the Spirit and, in a sense, in the soul at the same time. I don't know if that makes sense. But you're letting the Spirit have dominance over the old way, over the flesh, over the sensations and the emotions. And the, you're making your soul conform to the new way, the Spirit of God. Mm, that's awesome. Um, Deborah on Facebook asks quite a long question. I um, hope I don't butcher it. I often hear testimonies of people who've lost loved ones to sickness. They will tell their story and say that God was comforting them and holding them through the hard times. Is it okay to give and glorify such testimonies where we came too short to release his healing? So I guess we're giving a testimony of how he comforted us. Is that okay to... Well, certainly, I, I mean, death is a reality and some people die prematurely and that's unfortunate, but you can still be comforted uh, and strengthened in the midst of that process and you, you need to be. In other words, we go through a, a grieving process, but we need to go from grieving, which is sort of self-centered, what am I going to do now? And we need to transition into mourning, which is more of a celebration for that person and then moving on with the rest of your life. Uh, and so it's okay to grieve. It's okay to if the, a short season of that transition into mourning. The, the blessed are those that mourn, not those that grieve. And w then we move on with uh, our future in, in the Lord. Uh, how that relates to, you know, not everyone uh, gets healed. That doesn't mean it wasn't God's will that they pass away. Uh, but sometimes for whatever reason, we, we have to deal with someone's premature home going, mm. rejoice that they're in the presence of the Lord. And yes, it's, it's good to testify that God gave you strength and comfort in that time. Amen. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, so Maya on YouTube is asking, so is our, sp is our spirit automatically quickened when we read the word or should we ask as David did, Whenever we're going through sickness, discouragement, fear, etc., should we ask to be constantly um, quickened? Uh, I'm trying to remember my past. I mean, I, I get quickened every time I open the Word. So I would, you know, if, if you don't feel that you're being quickened by the Word, if it's dry to you, then yeah, ask, of course, that the Lord would quicken things mm -hmm. to you that He wants to bring, bring to your attention and make alive in you. So yeah, it doesn't hurt to ask. Uh, hopefully we would come to a place where every time we open the word, things just jump off the page. Uh, that would be, that would be the good place, I think. Yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, Sherry on Facebook is asking, can we ask God to see into the spiritual realm about our situation like Elijah did for his servant? Yeah, you can ask God anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we can ask to see. Uh, ask the Lord to show you. He may or may not at that particular point in time, or you may or may not be uh, in a place where you're alive to that yet. So uh, God has shown me things. I was telling the students again this morning, God showed me things in 1992 that are just now coming to place or coming to pass in the last uh, three or four years. 
Uh, some of them started coming to pass uh, 15 years ago. Some started coming to pass recently. Uh, but they were things that God showed me so long ago, but I couldn't uh, get discouraged because it took so long. I just had to, by faith and patience, I inherit the promises. So yeah, ask God to show you things. And uh, if, if he needs to, he will. And then, but that doesn't mean it's just going to automatically happen with you sitting on your hands. Uh, no, there are th sometimes we need to get involved uh, and first believe God that there is that, that vision is coming. And then stay firm in the course that you're on right now. And by faith and patience, you know, you'll inherit. Yeah, that's super good. Um, okay, so um, I think it's Fi, and I, or I apologize if I butchered your name. Please forgive me. Um, on YouTube is asking, uh, it says, I love that our will or our chooser has been set free at the new birth to choose to walk after the spirit. But is the will part of the soul? Is it our soul or our heart? Where is the will? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Just sanctify your will. Choose the things that God that God cho cho chooses. And uh, I don't. I can't get into those hair splitting questions. I just. Who cares? I don't know. Mm. Uh, just choose the things of God, and let let your will uh, learn a new direction, uh, and make yourself choose that which is good and lovely and of good report. Go to Philippians four eight. Read that about how you are to meditate and think, and then make those your choices. Yeah, and you know sometimes, like you said earlier, some people have just been living totally reacting to the flesh that it's become just so normal to you your right. second nature to, to act that way that sometimes it just just take time and for us as well you know we are still learning that you never stop learning but every day i learn a little something that even just dealing with people as well i'm like part of me wants to go oh, and i'm like no 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 and i and i i'm learning to wait and pray and my answer the next day is always so much better yes. than it would have been <laughs> had I answered immediately, you know. I had a teacher so. in Bible college that uh, was almost extravagant in this, but we would ask him questions, whether it be in class or in a personal counseling session, and he would just sit back, and sometimes even close his eyes, and I would think, did he hear me or mm -hmm. is he falling asleep? I just didn't know. But he was getting the mind of the spirit. And he would finally mm. come forth with an answer uh, that was really good. But he couldn't just pop it off the top of his yes. head. He doesn't want to speak from that necessarily. But he wanted to hear what the spirit was saying. And it just took him choosing to do that rather yeah. than well, let me just tell them what I know. Uh, Choices, yes. choices are being made, and that's yeah. always important. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Barry, I just want to say thank you for today. Um, I, I say this every single time I do this, but I love these Bible studies because I feel like I'm just learning so much. And, I, and I'm sure you guys have been so blessed by today. So thank you for all the questions that you've sent in. And um, it's Friday, so have a wonderful weekend. And we'll be back on Monday at 10 a.m. You guys Amen. take care. God bless. God bless you.